Hello, this is a bonus lecture for our 194 Introduction to Poetry class towards the end of the What is Poetry section. In this brief lecture, I'll address two poems, Seamus Haney's Digging and Messenger, sometimes also called by its first line, My Work is Loving the World by Mary Oliver. Both poems include a few of the themes that we've already addressed. The resentment or notion of alienation and difference that the poetic speaker has versus the rest of society, as well as the notion of labor, work, and finally the added property of attention, vision, and voice that the poetic sensibility affords. Let's start actually with Messenger by Mary Oliver, a recent poet, died about two years ago, American poet who writes in a free verse style without any clear meter, rhythm, or rhyme. And in her poem, Messenger, title of which I actually learned from one of you, my work is loving the world, she writes quite insistently and clearly about this notion of labor and work. My work, she says, is what others may consider indolent, but it is to love the world. The world. And here, as we're taking a corona walk, we can join Mary Oliver in the kind of walk that she makes around the lush forest in her area. Here the sunflowers, the hummingbird, the blue plum, the speckled sand, plums again that we notice. Are my boots old, my coat torn, am I no longer young? Let me keep my mind on what matters, which is my work. Her work is not in any clear way of improving society, but rather on the work of the mind, the work of noticing, the work of attending, of paying attention. Perhaps indeed the most valuable, lucrative, uh, important asset that we have, especially in our day, but although Oliver was writing this a few decades back, paying attention, standing still, and learning to be astonished. In Oliver's language, to be a reader, to be a lover of poetry, is to be someone who is in love with the world, who retains that capacity for astonishment. To be astonished at the ordinary beauty of flower, the phoebe, the delphinium, the sheep in the pasture. Once again, as we've seen in the last few lessons, poetry can teach us to hear, to hear the poetry in ordinary conversation between friends, to hear the poetry in an ordinary note left in, a, left in the kitchen but also to see, to see the beauty of the meadow, to see the, the beauty of the wheelbarrow, and to see the beauty that surrounds us constantly. Seamus Haney's digging digs into the past, takes a different perspective in beauty. It also is bound up with the soil, with the lush, the good turf of Ireland, Seamus Haney's homeland, Haney being a Nobel Prize winning poet of the late 20th century. And Haney also distinguishes himself from his ancestors, his father, his, forefa his, his uh, father, his grandfather, his forefathers. He writes, between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests snug as a gun. Under my window, a clean rasping sound, and the spade sinks into gravelly ground. My father, digging, I look down. He notices, too, how different he is than his ancestors. And he doesn't take it as a, as a mark of inferiority. He also doesn't look down upon his farmer, peasant, father and grandfather who works with a spade and rather takes note that his father and grandfather were able to dig up, to dig up from that Irish turf, the good turf as he says, the cold smell of potato mold. He makes that, he makes that vocation, their work, palpable. He's able to notice through his power of poetry through the power of his hand, what his father and grandfather were doing in a deep, significant way. I've no stage to follow men like that, men like, like them, Shane is in, writes, but between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests, I'll dig with it. His pen remains an instrument of work, one of unearthing the past, unearthing experience but one which allows him to write, to write experience, to bring up 
the past to bring up the experience and emotion, the legacy of his ancestors. The people like his father, like his parents, the people who take note of what is written with that pen. Thank you.